Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining this tested, posted discussion. We call this ED chat, and I love it because we get to see the faces of all the members and the people that serve the community that are also part of TechSoup. Today's spotlight is on women who run nonprofits. And I know this is Women's History Month, so you all are champions to us. I mean, if you're not being spotlighted, I'm sure you're being spotlighted in your family, in your community. So thank you for what you do in the community. And as I always say, when we come to ED Chat, this is about you. So I definitely want you all to engage in the conversation. Before we get started, I want to remind you that this is being recorded. And if you would make sure that you stay on mute until maybe you use the raise your hand option to speak, or um, we'll just call out your name to ask you to ask your question live if you'd like to. If you'd like the closed caption, just tap on the CC button at the bottom of your screen, and that'll turn the closed caption on. So what I want to do is I'm going to have um, ED chat. I'm trying to do this monthly. So I would love to hear the topics that you want to talk about, because that's what executive directors chat. This is not me just chatting. It's you all chatting with each other, sharing resources. So I put my email there and also put it at the top of the screen. Email me at asimons at techsuit.org. I need a feature speaker for next month. Um, when, when you close the screen, we, we're doing um, feature speakers who serve people who have um, um, autistic, uh, all types of disabilities. So if you are a nonprofit, whether male or female, please email me and I would love for you to be a feature speaker next month. We have one, I need one more. And also I wanna spotlight men. So if you know a male who is a, executive director or founder of a nonprofit, please have them contact me because May and June, we're gonna talk about the men. We're gonna hear from the men. So without further ado, I wanna introduce you uh, the three ladies that we are spotlighting this month. Uh, Miss Jackie, and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about her and then Angie's gonna go and then we're gonna go on to Wendy Ford. And I'm excited to hear more about you all. So as Jackie is getting ready to prepare her screen, to share, go ahead and continue to let me know where you are zooming in from in the chat room. I love you coming from all over, um, from West Coast, East Coast, everywhere. So thank you so much. Jackie, I'm gonna turn this over to you. And you're on mute, sweetie. All right, she'll be with us in just a moment. So yeah, you're, you're still on mute. I love it, you guys. Technology is always something. So as she's starting in, again, please continue to let us know when you are, there we go, when you are, Jackie. Yes, can right. you see my screen? Can you see my screen? No, would you share it again? You, you, you closed it. I think when I share it, um, it, 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 um, it, it, it mutes me. Oh no. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you yeah. what, I will come back to Jackie and I will get your slides and I'll share your slides while you talk. We'll go on to Angie. Thank you so much. That's why we gotta be prepared. So we'll go on to Angie now. Angie, you can go ahead and share. And thank you so much for being here, Angie. Thank you, Aretha. I'm really happy to be here as part of Women's History Month. Um, so just before I share my slides, I just want to say hi to everybody. Thank you for being here. Each and every one of you just has such a purpose and just drives forth together for us to really to make lasting change in our community. Um, but I just want to share that as an organization, since our inception, we have women empowerment has really been the central to our work. Um, the vast majority of the families that we work with um, are women, um, and they you know, the families actually are, the women are the bread earners um, in there as well. Um, two thirds of our team um, is women and also 60% of our board members are also women. So go women this month um, and every month after that. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my slides with you all. Give me one moment, please.
Oh no, what is going on? Okay, so it's not just a um a Jackie thing. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Perfect. Okay. All right, perfect. Must have temporarily <laughs> cut me off. Um, so as I said, I am the Chief Development Officer and co-founder of Hope Partnership. Um, we focus on strengthening our communities, empowering our neighbors, and building hope. Need the screen, there we go. So as an organization, the reason that we do exist is because we believe that housing is a human right. We believe that everybody in our community deserves a safe place to go home. So everything that we do as an organization focuses on that. Every decision that we make as an organization is this going to help people be able to secure a safe place to call home. So really as Hope Partnership, kind of who we are, is we really aim to provide holistic care. Um, so we're looking at folks as a whole person, not just maybe their housing situation or their healthcare situation, but we kind of want to wrap around them and really holistically see how we can help them move forward. Um, we do this by connecting with service providers. We do not do this alone. We never could. Um, also businesses and different investors in the community. Um, and Collecto is a client. Everything that we do also is evidence-based solution and also trauma-informed. So that's really important for us to make sure that we are bringing part of that into what we do. Um, again, to strengthen those communities, empower our neighbors, and also building hope. Because a lot of times there's a lot of lost hope when people come to see us. Um, and then we have, you can see on the bottom, the entities that we do have. So Hope Center, Hope Cares, Hope Works. And we also have a strategy team that works at the policy level, at the local and the state level. And then as far as agency success and impact, I'm super excited to announce um, that we are celebrating 10 years next month. Um, so it's been an incredible journey um, for Hope Partnership. But in, since our inception, uh, we were part of a local mission um, out of a church initially. Um, we've been able to serve over 100,000 of our neighbors. Um, so what started as a small two-woman shop, uh, we thought that we were going to serve about 200 people a year, and we ended up serving over 1,000 in our first year. Um, we have several programs, um, from housing to employment. One of the ones that I want to highlight today is our newest offering. Um, so this is Client Care Day. So what this does is this allows us to really be able to co-locate other organizations, which is also part of our model. Um, so in partnership with other partner organizations, we offer a variety of services. Um, so that includes medical and dental. So we look, work with our local health services, um, food, showers, identification, which is a huge thing for our clients, um, people that don't have proper identification, haircuts, financial literacy, and also SNAP benefits. So there are just a little bit um, as far as impact here for just 2022. Um, so we served over 750 heartbeats. Um, that attended Client Care Day. And you'll hear me say heartbeat throughout my presentation because we see people as people. We don't see people as a number, so they want we want them to feel so. Um, also identification. So 148 people received identification services. The main goal here, um, we're located in Central Florida, is for them to get a Florida ID. So we can provide all the documentation um, allowed for them to be able to secure an ID. And this really helps people to move forward in their lives, secure employment and any benefits that they might qualify for. Um, also showers. We provide every single week um, an opportunity for people to have a safe place to shower. Um, when we first opened this, um, there was a young lady that shared with me that she hadn't taken a shower in over four and a half months. She was so excited. Um, she didn't want to go out in public. She was staying in her tent camp. Um, and this was an amazing experience for her. So now she knows where she can come weekly to be able to have a safe place to shower. And then my path to nonprofit um, did not start in nonprofit. <clears throat> um, I first worked in the corporate sector um, and decided to leave the corporate sector. Then started really thinking and imagining my career path, something that was closer and reflected to my true passion, which is helping people, helping people see their gifts and talents, um, sometimes that they can't see. Um, so there was a day that I was asked to walk a new journey um, with my dear friend and our CEO um, to start a whole partnership. And I said, yes, um, I was super excited. I may or may not have fell off the bed when I got that phone call. <laughs> um, 
but to be able to start a new journey, being able to help people um, in a capacity that I hadn't before. Um, and then just really for me, I am a researcher and educator. So being able to educate myself, um, I will research best practice to the end of the earth um, to make sure. So what I started with was really shadowing over 50 other nonprofits in Central Florida um, that were serving those experiencing homelessness of poverty, which is the population that we serve. Um, then we transitioned, I transitioned to the nonprofit world um, and co-parted what we call Hope Partnership. So for me, continuing education is not only important for us in leadership, um, but also for my team. So obtaining certifications, um, I am part of the Associated Fundraising Professionals, um, Central Florida chapter, um, attend many fundraising webinars, training, conferences, and also nonprofit coalitions. Um, I love these especially because it gives me an opportunity to get in a room with other nonprofits where we can start to collaborate, where we can talk about what the needs are in the community. And I would say that my biggest lesson learned um, on this journey, so it's been just a, probably 11 years now, um, is building relationships and partnerships that's in our name. Um, so building relationships is tremendously important. And what we found is over our experience for the last 10 years, um, really affirmed what we truly believe is that partnerships are not relational. They are relational, they're not transactional. And partnerships, we not only partner with our community members, we only partner with our donors, and also with volunteers, board members, and also people that we serve. Single thing, building relationships is tremendously important. And one thing is, not overlooking a very valuable relationship is a community partner. Um, so I chatted about this a little before is that we don't do anything. I'm not sure if you can see it on your screen, um, but one of my favorites, I have a quote from Brene Brown um, that just states that we're not intended to do it alone, that we never were meant to. Um, so we can be more positive and be able to move forward in a way that we make more impact um, by working together. It sounds all muffled to me. Oh, I'm like, I can't hear. Really? And then advice I would share um, with other nonprofit leaders, staff, or volunteers, keep trying, keep working at it. Um, we have a saying oh. in our office um, that's one of our commitments to try things on. Sometimes they work I out. Um, and really did looking at today's to really you. Like tomorrow's lesson. Because we did a lot of that. It's because I said um, a lot of that over the mailbox because saying, okay, we're one of our uh, partners. Um, it also makes you more innovative to be able to do that. Um, and in, in doing that, just really staying true to your mission. Um, I think that's tremendously important. Over the years, we've had either funders or someone that wants to write a grant or um, a business and wanting us to do something that's outside of our scope of work. Um, and that's something with a collaborative mindset that, that we don't do. We reach out to partners that are providing that um, to be able to do that. And resilience is the skill to have. Definitely you need to be resilient. Um, there are going to be a lot of doors um, that were closed, but there's going to also be many that are open. So I talk about physical, mental, and emotional resilience. Really are keys for leaders to cultivate. And this can really be through challenges. Um, so I have learned to, you know, breathe through the challenges and really hang on to that resilience and just keep moving forward. I said regular change is needed. I know that change sometimes is really scary for folks. All change is lost, um, and we know that. But change allows us to innovate and to adjust what we're doing to pivot. I know that we had to do a lot of changing um, when COVID happened. A lot of us had to change what we were doing and really innovate our processes and innovate our programs that they've still met the needs of the people that we serve in the community. And then I want to thank you so much for your time, so much for being here. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, um, here's my contact information. Also, if you have any questions or you want to kind of have a chat of certain things that I've talked about um, that you want to do offline, I am happy to do that. But thank you so much today um, for being here. Appreciate you. That was wonderful, Angie. I, I know there are a lot of new nonprofits here, people who may have just started. And I heard you say you started with the idea, you all started with the idea of just helping 200 people a year, but that ended up being 1,000. And sometimes that's the way the nonprofits take off. It, it's just, it just takes off in ways you don't know. So I wanted to give people an opportunity to ask um, Angie a question. 
Uh, this is the perfect time. She's here. She can ask you a question. Please use the raise your hand option so we don't speak over each other. Uh, lots of comments. Wow, so inspirational. Um, beautiful. Awesome. So I, I know somebody put a question in the chat, but I would love for you to ask Angie the question. Um, you can unmute yourself. You don't have to come on off the screen, on camera rather. Chelsea, did you want to ask her your question? Okay, if not, then what I'm going to do is have um, Wendy get ready to prepare her screen. And um, I want to make sure that Jackie, you've got my, um, you've got my, my message to go ahead and call in. Yes, I did call in. Yes, I did. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Okay, Wendy, thank you so much for being here. to find the unmute. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So I am Wendy Ford, um, as Aretha said, and I am the president and CEO of the Osceola Council on Aging. So we're in the middle of Kissimmee, um, middle of Disney World, for those of you that um, are not in the Central Florida area. So there's a lot of need in this area. Um, we are a nonprofit charitable organization dedicated to providing services to enable independence and self-sufficiency for seniors, disabled adults, the disadvantaged, and families living in poverty. So kind of we work very closely with the Hope Center. So there's a lot of um, partnerships in Osceola County. We have to depend on our partners and depend on a lot of nonprofits to get the job done. We are a service-driven industry in Osceola County. So there's a lot of um, poverty in Osceola, a lot of people living in hotels as the Hope Center um, helps transition them into to sustainable housing. And, and we do the wraparound services. And so it takes an entire team to to do this effort and to make sure that the people of Osceola County are taken care of. Um, on your screen, you see last year we were able to serve over 227,000 people in Osceola County. I think our new population is around 400,000. So that's a little over half of the population in Osceola County had some kind of touch point with the Council on Aging. So, um, and we were able to provide that with only about 220 employees. So <laughs> it's been a huge effort, but we do it. And every year we strive for more and to make a bit bigger impact in the community. Um, we are the lead agency for elder services, as well as the lead agency for community action programs in Osceola County. And what that means is we serve just about all generations and we do just about all social services. We host about 40 different programs under one roof to help the independence of seniors and families in need. Some of those programs are Meals on Wheels. We have two food pantries. We have uh, several low-income housing properties. We are able to um, extend rent utility assistance, home repair. We have case management. We have an adult day healthcare center for those that have Alzheimer's so that families can drop them off during the day and still go to work and know that their parents are taken care of. We have an indigent health clinic and so much more. So. Last year, as you see on, on the screen, we were able to assist families and seniors with over four and a half million dollars in rent, utility, and home repair needs. We gave out over two million pounds of food between our two food pantries. And lastly, we were awarded two new HUD apartment complexes to construct and a third from the county allowing us to house another 200 or so low-income seniors. So yay, <laughs> much needed, much, much needed. Um, so I started with the council over 24 years ago. My path to my current appointment of CEO was never a desire and never a dream of mine. I never reached like that. I loved working behind the scenes. I was a good little worker bee, never quite wanted to be in the front runner. Um, when I was 16, I dropped out of high school and my father nearly lost his mind. So I ended up in beauty school and I graduated top of my class and began working in a salon at 17. So I took the long way around. But when I was in my early 20s, I was doing our former CEO's hair, who told me of one of their new senior apartment buildings that they had just completed. So I began volunteering at that new apartment complex doing the resident's hair. Because I wanted to volunteer, I wanted to give my talents that God allowed me to have to other people. So I did it for free just so that they would feel good about themselves. 
So next thing I knew, I started working there part-time doing a senior companion program. And then two months later, it was full-time and it just took off from there. So I moved around into many positions in our housing department and eventually went back to school and earning my degree at 40 years old. So then I moved into the finance department while still overseeing our, our housing inventory. When our former CEO, who was there for 40 years, was retiring, the board began their search for a new director. I felt God stirring inside of me to apply for this job. I fought it for a couple of weeks, and then I finally made a deal with him that I would apply <laughs> if someone from the board would come to me and ask me to apply. So I didn't know anybody from the board, so I figured I was really safe. Well, you know, when God has a plan for you, safe or not, you're going. You're going wherever he wants to put you. So I had three board members approach me to apply. So when the last one asked me to apply, I started bawling. I said, I know God is going to make me take this position and I don't want it because I hate public speaking. So here I sit, just as God had planned 24 years ago on my journey at the council, public speaking and all. The lesson that I have learned is to trust God. And when he leads you down a path, even when you are uncertain and you don't feel qualified, he will equip you. He is always right on time. My advice to anyone who is an emerging leader or already in a leadership role is to not sweat the small stuff. Do not fight every battle. Pick which are important to you and move on. The others are not worth your time nor your effort. Develop a thick skin. Not everyone will love you or even like you. And that's okay because, you know, we don't like everyone either. So if you have a team that agrees with you totally, you have the wrong team. You want different opinions. You want someone to play devil's advocate with you and challenge you to think outside the box. That's what makes us grow and become more inclusive of other people's thoughts and their perspectives. Remember, everyone is important. It takes every person on your team, whether it be a volunteer, a board member, or anybody that supports you in your agency or business, it takes them to make your business what it is. And lastly, and most importantly, always listen to that still voice. God always shows us where we are to go and what we are to do. It is up to us to be still and listen. I pray for clarity every morning that I hear his voice and not my own so that I can make the best decisions possible for our agency and the lives that we impact. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Amazing. I know there's some questions. So there are some questions that were uh, sent to me. Um, first of all, I'm glad I was on mute because when both of you are speaking, I'm back here cheering for y'all. I'm like, yeah. so this has been amazing. Okay, so there are questions. I'm going to scroll back up because this has been amazing. I do want to, so somebody sent me a direct message that I, I want Wendy, you to think about. Um, okay. She thought this was going to be about something else. She's a new 501c3 and just getting started building her board, finding partnership, building a mission, just the vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you give her some words of wisdom? They're just like a baby, 501c3. Um, well, I came in as it was already established and, and I'm in the expansion period. I think Angie probably has more tools from for the ground up and those kind of things because I'm in a different place and I didn't start at that place. Yeah, sure, Angie or Jackie. Go ahead, Angie. Yeah. Sure. I would say in the beginning, like I visited so many other organizations. Um, I wanted to know what was best practice. I also wanted to know how people were be, being served well. Um, and unfortunately, I saw how people are not being served well. Um, so that was a huge lesson. And make friends. When you come out and you're the new kid on the block, you do not want to be competitive. Um, you want to be collaborative. Also, you want the best of the best and you don't want to recreate the wheel. Um, surround, surround yourself with the best organizations that actually can help move forward your mission um, so that you're working in a collaborative space, being able to ask them to join you. Um, I know in the chat there was a question about how we do our partnerships. Uh, we partner with a, over 60 other organizations in Central Florida, um, and that's what helps us provide that continue of care, that holistic care. Um, and we can do a warm handoff with folks and say, hey, we have this organization that we work with. Um, also, finding out what would be mutually beneficial um, and figuring out what they provide as an organization and what you can provide and how you can work together. Um, there's just so many ways that you can collaborate. You can do grant collaboration. 
we all know in this space that there's only so much funding um, for all of the hundreds of thousands of nonprofits throughout the country. Um, so doing a collaboration, maybe where you do one piece and another, but I think too, just visiting other nonprofits and saying, hey, this is what we're doing. You know, we'd really love to work with you. We really think that you, what you do as a service would align with our mission. Very good, very good. So I, I hope that the question about the partnerships, because both of you have said the word partnership, you depend on partners. So that's very important. I wanna give um, Jackie her space and then we'll definitely have time for the rest of the questions and answers. But this has been fabulous. Ladies, it's been awesome. Um, Jackie, yeah, there you go. You can feel free to go ahead and share your screen. I just want to make sure you can hear me. Would you, would you mute your... Um... Is it still... Is it still... Yeah, we hear a little echo. Um, okay. If you, that better? Um, is your is your screen on me? Yeah, that's better. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm so Thank sorry about much. that. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'm Jackie St. I'm Jackie St. Hold on, Jackie, because I wanted to make sure we get all the other recording. Do me a favor, mute your phone for a second. Okay, now say something. Okay, I don't know why your echo is so, oh, maybe you're on speakerphone. If you're on speaker, can you take your, um, <laughs> can you just put it to your, maybe that's what it is. It's not on speaker. It's not on speaker. It's not on speaker. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Angie has to mute herself. Hello? Is you, is you, you sound good here. Is that better? You have to mute your computer. I did mute it. <laughs> I did it. You sound good right there. There you go. Keep going. You sound good. So sorry about that. Um, I'm Jackie St. Kendra. The founder of Minority Wealth Gap, together with my husband, Jemba Sinkandwa. Minority Wealth Gap's mission is to lift Black and Hispanic communities out of poverty, one family at a time. Minority Wealth Gap is a nonprofit based on empowering minority populations to maximize their potential and thereby reducing the wealth gap from their co comparable counterparts. Okay. Um, My husband okay. and I. I'm so sorry, Jackie, because I, I know we're, we're gonna get tons of message. Um, so do me one favor. Let's try your computer again, because I know everyone had that problem. Let's just try your computer sound and, and, um, and mute your phone and let's see how that goes. Yeah, thank you guys. We, we, we're gonna edit all this out. So when you see the video replay, you won't even see this. So yeah, let's try it that way. And did you go off computer? Did you remove yourself from the computer screen and just call in? Um, like stop my video? Okay, yeah. Um, so try sharing. It's fine. I try sharing the screen again. Okay. Yeah, let's try it one more time. We have time. <laughs> okay, and so your video sound, try to unmute yourself from your video, from your computer and not your phone. Okay. That's okay. I'll tell you, don't share your slides and just come on camera with us and share. How about that? <laughs> All right, you can unmute yourself. Technology, sometimes we can't always have our way with technology. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry about that. That's okay. Um, That's okay, you can tell us about you. Tell us about the Minority Wealth Gap. Okay, I'm Jackie Sinkandwa, the founder of Minority Wealth Gap, together with my husband, Jemba Sinkandwa. 
Minority Wealth Gap's mission is to lift Black and Hispanic communities out of poverty one family at a time. Minority Wealth Gap is a nonprofit based on empowering minority populations to maximize their potential and thereby reducing the wealth gap from their comparable counterparts. My husband and I used our personal finances to take children through school in Africa and often helped out our community members out here in the USA. But when COVID happened, we received a lot of urgent requests from our community members in the USA and it was overwhelming. We had a tough discussion about finances and our future and concluded that there had to be a better way. Being in the financial industry, I witnessed the flow of resources that did not reach our community. And that was the and this is the foundation of Minority Wealth Gap. I had to do something. I had to use my skills, my knowledge, and my talent to obtain resources for my community and alleviate the suffering. Minority Wealth Gap has projects in the USA. While it may appear that we're too ambitious and we're taking on too much, our approach in, is in the firm belief that there is no one size fits all. All of these areas have been found to have an impact on wealth disparity. And in reality, a lot of these are positively correlated. For example, dealing with housing reduces mental stress. So one of our how one of our projects is housing stability. There are so many single moms that don't have stable housing or are facing housing insecurity. For one reason or another, they got behind on their rent most during COVID because most of them owned home businesses because that's the best option to raise your kids. And as a result, they, they couldn't keep up and did not obtain rent, re rent relief that was being offered. So Minority Wealth Gap is submitting proposals to obtain rental apartments to help the single mothers. The other program under Minority Wealth Gap is domestic violence. According to the National Coalition Against Domestic Violence, more than 40% of Black women have experienced intimate partner, physical violence, sexual violence, or stalking in their lifetime. And more than half of Black adult women homicides are related to intimate partner violence. The domestic violence program is led by Ms. Catherine Tiramreva, a domestic violence survivor herself. She started her work in Uganda, East Africa, and relocated to the USA. Her and her team led this work under Minority Wealth Gap for this division. And the nutrition and wellness, this is led by Dr. Jane Kigozi, our vice president. Dr. Jane is a her doctorate in public health, a master's degree in nutrition, and is a registered dietitian. She is focused on nutrition counseling and preventive care needed to stay healthy. Good health is wealth, and it's tough to eat healthy on limited income. Our goal is a healthier community through education in nutrition to reduce chances of serious illness such as diabetes and heart disease. And the mental health awareness, this is so dear to me because I have family members who struggle with depression, severe forms of depression. Mental health illness does not discriminate by race, color, gender, or sexual orientation. The family members struggle with mental health and often experience trauma. And the biggest challenge is a lack of mental health services in minority communities. It takes all of us to address these issues, whether those together we can realize a shared vision of a nation. Together we can realize a shared, shared vision of a nation where those affected by mental health, no matter their background, culture, ethnicity, and identity can get appropriate support and quality care to live healthy, fulfilling lives. We are working on access to mental health care for our community, mostly for the severe cases that need, that need a psychiatrist. All these educational and awareness programs result, into, result in mentorship, networking, and training. And in addition, I'm a tech super ambassador and tech connect Los Angeles chapter lead. 
I took this on to encourage my community to take an interest in tech and help other nonprofits in our community serve on technology. One of our early success stories is our work in the USA with another nonprofit called National Initiative. We funded their sports day event. The biggest challenge with black nonprofits is the giving up and obtaining funding. We had a mom versus kids soccer match and we had a sports day as well. Our next goal is a trip to Seattle where we're told to present a cultural aspect. And it's often a struggle to figure out funding for these youth trips. Minority Wealth Gap also operates in Uganda, East Africa. We worked with a faith-based organization called Freedom Celebration Center in Kakiri. They had a 500 seat building and we upgraded it into a modern conference center for conferences and to be used for weddings and other functions. And as a result, we're creating employment opportunities. The byproduct of that was an immediate need for a grocery store. And we will, people would walk miles just to obtain necessary groceries. And one of the things we did was select a single mom of four children to operate that grocery store. She had a background in, in stores. But the whole goal was to obtain a conference center and offer catering services as well. So we're working on that as we speak. In addition, there was a parking structure that was not used in that neighborhood. People are not able to have parking for their cars and motor vehicles safely. And so that turned into another business venture and created some employment and income as well. We also work in the rural areas in Uganda in an outreach with Sowe Island. This island can only be reached by boat and therefore has a high poverty rate. The first challenge was hunger. And we sent food and necessary supplies over the holidays to the island. Most of the food is delivered by boat, but we're working on identifying income generating projects that will provide employment opportunities on the island. We were looking into poultry or commercial farming or raising pigs. But the faith-based leader in the island has emphasized that he needs teachers. He's focusing on the youth and he needs furniture and textbooks. This project is dear to me because my mother was a head teacher and I learned how to read and write because of the exchange programs between the USA and Uganda. My, my path to nonprofit lady. Her days are part of a process. Closed doors are an opportunity to keep seeking new doors. I can't tell you how many no's were received, but the one yes makes a difference. A life transformed is worth the journey. To me, the lady that got the grocery store is worth it all. Advice to other leaders, success will depend on team members being aligned with your NGO vision and mission. I had to make some tough decisions earlier on and let some people go. Not everyone will be built in and identifying the right partners is key. And it's not a job, but purpose-driven, rewarding work. Back to you, Aretha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So there were some people who were asking um, about NGOs, a lot, a lot of questions. So if you can put your contact information in the chat room, Jackie, for those who are interested in partnership. And Lily, I don't think she got her question answered. She said, how do you legally form your partnership? So I think Wendy and Angie, you have the most experience with these partnerships because you have um, been doing this for a long time, 10 years or more. So how do you legally, how do you all legally form your partnerships? Do you use MOUs? Go for yeah. it. MOUs, agreements, um, it, whatever um, is required. 
a lot of MOUs going around. I think we probably have 100 MOUs easily with organizations yeah. in and around Florida and elsewhere. Um, it just, it, it, you have to have on paper, especially if you're going to do a grant, you have to have on paper some kind mm -hmm. of an agreement between you and the other partnership as to uh, where where you start and they begin and and so forth. So it's um, so it's very clear legally, but it's it's usually just standard MOUs and and agreements and and generally one of the partners will come up with something for the other one. So Angie, did you want to add to that? I would agree. Um, we do MOUs as well. It's just a simple contract of basically what they're going to provide and what you're going to provide. Sometimes um, what we've learned along the way is it was a lot of paperwork that we didn't realize is that we were not on an auto renewal system. Um, we were actually looking and saying, oh, it might be a great idea annually to look at this MOU until we had over 65 and realized that. So now ours are on auto renew um, every year unless there's something needs to be changed with the MOU or um, something needs to be discussed where it needs to be changed, or sometimes if we have to end the MOU of some practices that have happened um, to protect the organization. Also, sometimes, depending on the organization or the company, like Wendy said, they will come with their own MOU. Um, it is a lot more legal text heavy, um, but for us, um, like Wendy mentioned, um, for grants, you just have to show that there is a partnership and it is a binding agreement. Um, so it gives you as an organization some security and some liability protection, um, which is really important. So if they're not meeting their end of what they said they would provide, um, one of the things that we run into often is consistency of services. So, so important to us. So if they agree to be on our site one day a week, one hour a week, you need to make sure that you're doing that because the folks that we serve, they're using their last bus ticket, they're walking to get to us, they're biking to get to us. Um, and that is a reflection because guess who they're mad at? They're not mad at the organization that did not show up. They're mad at the organization that they're coming to. Um, so really important for us to make sure um, that that MOU is solid. Um, also looking up who you're doing an MOU with. You can research their 990s. You can get their information online. All of it is free. Um, and make sure that you're partnering with somebody that <clears throat> aligns with your mission but also has fidelity. That was awesome. So I know that not everybody here has a nonprofit. You may be a volunteer or work with a nonprofit. And Margaret asked, um, she heard the word mentorship mentioned, and she wanted to know, is, is it possible to obtain a mentor through this group? So if anybody wants to be a mentor to Margaret, Margaret, put your contact information. What type of mentor? Because see, there's all types of mentor, just like there's all types of coaching. You have to be specific in what you need mentorship in. And there may be some synergy here. Um, lots of questions in the chat room. If you guys can put your information. Um, someone asked, where's the conference in Uganda, Jackie? Somebody asked that. Where's your conference in Uganda? If you want to unmute yourself and let us know. Again, you guys have been in the chat room. Go ahead. Yes, so the conference center is in Kakiri. It's under Freedom, Freedom Center. I can give you more contacts. Um, there's also more information on our website regarding the Soway School that we're trying to support. Um, again, I know you mentioned about Memorandum of Understanding. We do have an attorney in Uganda. Um, since we just started out, it's a lot of paperwork. We're still trying to put our paperwork together, uh, have those MOUs with the nonprofit organizations back home. Um, but in Uganda, it doesn't stop you from sending money here and there to, to assist with an immediate need, but yes. Awesome, so you guys go ahead and share information. And Eloisa, you made a good point. It's, it's important to mention what these acronyms in because not everybody is in the same level in the nonprofit sector. What's an NGO, non-governmental organization? What's the MOU, Memorandum of Understanding? Sometimes there's MOA, Memorandum of, uh, of Agreement. So. Thank you. So we'll we'll all try to keep that in mind as we're speaking the nonprofit language. And that's that's a, a good point. Somebody said, what is an NGO? So if you don't know, just ask. That's what we're here for. Again, that is why ED Chat was here. It's not just about conversation. It's about resources and learning and all the technology that you're using to accomplish this. So thank you. Um, Aaron said, I'd love for each speaker to share about their intersectionality of being a woman and an executive director. Very good question. I'm going to start with Angie, then we'll go to Wendy, and then we'll go to Jackie. 
I would say, um, even in the age that we live in, it's hard. Sometimes you walk into a room um, and uh, the tall white gentleman, um, sometimes they look for, I've had where I've walked into meetings um, as the leader of my organization and they're looking for the white male. Um, so we are still fighting the fight um, that women before us, generations before us um, are fighting, um, but making our headway. Um, I would say that the majority um, of nonprofits are run by women. Um, and I don't think that we get the credit. I don't think, and not necessarily that we're looking for that because glory be to God for our organization, um, but really being able to be seen seriously as a leader. Um, but I think we're making headway. And I mean, I get in there, um, not afraid to say, nope, I am the leader of this organization. But I think just being able to make sure that you're creating a space, that you have your own brand and they know that you're serious about it. Wendy? I would have to agree with her because we, we are um, in the same area. So it's predominantly a male driven, um, Osceola County is, is, is male driven. It just is. It's old farmers. And, um, and so it, it is a different platform, I think, than other areas, um, not as progressive maybe, <laughs> uh, but honestly, they've welcomed me with open arms, but I've known a lot of people throughout the 24 years, 25 years I've been in that community. Um, so it wasn't quite as difficult, I think, breaking in. I think sometimes still, um, you know, I, I get where a, a male will talk to uh, one of my male coworkers thinking that he's the boss and he'll have to redirect them. And I, I remember one time in particular, somebody said something to a, a guy I was working with and we were interviewing somebody for a um, position and it happened to be a guy. And the guy said something, I, I was joking with the guy that I work with. And he said, oh, you're gonna let him talk to you like that? You're gonna let her talk to you like that? And he's like, she's the boss dude. <laughs> like, so, you know, it's like, it was, it. it occurred to me like, oh, you know, it, it just, you know, that was one of the first things that I had seen that was early on in my career in housing. But um, honestly, I don't let it even play into my, my day to day. I just keep going. I, I go where I'm called and I do what I'm supposed to do. And, and, you know, if they have a problem with it, that's their problem. I got to do what I have to do. So, and, and my chief of staff, She's on this call, uh, Janola. I don't know if you want to unmute yourself, but a lot of times we get a lot of looks because she's a very empowered black woman, and so you know they they really look at the two of us like, gosh, you know, it's, we're we're kind of this uh, weird little twosome, but you know we're we're great together, and I think it it helps balance the organization, you know. And we want more males. We do want more males because in, in the nonprofit world, you only get um, females really that apply. And, and a lot of times there are males that I want to represent certain programs. You know, I want, I want the young men that, that we influence that come through, you know, our youth programs to see that there's a strong male, you know, to look up to. And so it's important to us to have that as well as, as females. Very good, very good. Jackie? I will have to say, um, as a Black woman, just get used to the noise. Um, I remember trying to go, go through a grant writing process and just learning everything um, and talking to this grant writer. And basically, they just shut us down and said, you know, you can't apply for this. But uh, thankfully, I reached out to someone in TechSoup who connected me to Grant Station, and they gave me a grant writer who happened to be a social worker and could see what we're trying to do. And she helped us write, write the proposal, put it together. Um, it was me and another nonprofit, because I wanted to make sure if I don't get it, at least someone else would get it. And lo and behold, at least the other nonprofit is in the final stages. So um, a no is just not right now or is just try someone else that's how i live <laughs> i love that i love that well this has been fabulous i just want to highlight some things that i heard all of you say and you there's someone in this room that i know you you've touched on something that everybody does the clinic the housing the food bank the adult daycare 
the um, financial assistance, the partnership. It's been incredible, all the things you all do. Can you leave us with one, one, I won't say one final word. You can say whatever you want to say. Just one final thought. How about that? With with all the women here, women and men, not the nonprofit founders. And Jackie, I'll start with you. We'll go to Wendy and we'll end with Angie. I think that women are powerful. Um, I have been fortunate to be surrounded by powerful Black women growing up. And the one thing that I know, no matter where you're from, um, they have that resilience. They have that determination. Um, everything doesn't come easy. But um, once you know that, you just focus on your goal, focus on your mission, and there will be people that come and partner with you uh, because they are aligned with you. So I think it's just knowing that not everybody will be on the same page, but the people that will do, just make sure you match with them and partner with them. I think uh, as a woman and as a leader, I think a lot of times women are overlooked because we are the family caretakers. You know, it takes a lot for a woman to um, get into a leadership role and be able to, to keep going in that because I think there are so many more um, obstacles that we have to go around to make ourselves that much more. I think women are much more flexible in their thinking. I think we think outside the box. I think God made us different than men. So I think, you know, we're very effective when we are put into a leadership position. I think a woman takes it very seriously and not as an entitlement. I would say take your space in the room. Um, I had an opportunity a few years ago to be part of a program called Women Unlimited. Um, and they talk specifically, um, there's a pose and you can look it up, it's called the power pose, um, where you kind of put your legs a little bit spread and you put your hands on your hips and you take that space. Um, <clears throat> so that people, if they don't see you, and I let people know I'm not going anywhere. So we can either collaborate now or later down the road, you'll see the work that we're doing and say, you know what? I really should have done this earlier, but I'm doing it now. Um, so really being able to not in essence prove yourself, but your brand, build your brand and say, look, you're either on the train or you're off and we're gonna keep trucking along. We're not stopping. I love it, ladies. Angie, thank you so much. Wendy, thank you so much. Jackie, thank you so much. And thank you to every woman and man that was here today um, representing your nonprofit. This was so awesome. Lots of thank yous in the chat room. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day and continue doing what you do in your community. Bye-bye. Thank you.